Today, we'll have a look at the decentralized exchanges of the Internet Computer Protocol. And we've been able to identify three big decentralized exchanges that people on the Internet Computer are using to swap tokens and to do all kind of things that people usually do on decentralized exchanges. ICP Swap is the first one that we're gonna have a look at and we're on their Twitter right now. They have a huge following, over 100,000 followers. They are pretty active on Twitter, posting all kind of updates. They're listing new tokens. They're doing doing a lot of work, which I think is great to see. So let's have a look at the DEX itself. It's a very well-made website. It's what we would expect from one of the top projects on the internet computer. Let's go to the decentralized exchange itself. Let's launch the app. And the first thing that I want us to do right now is to connect to it. So the way you connect to a decentralized exchange in general, we click on connect wallet and we see that we are able to connect with all the main ICP wallets but also with our internet identity. So let's connect with our internet identity. So the first thing that we see on ICP Swamp is the swap interface, which is very similar to any other swap interface out there because it's a decentralized exchange. I guess there is no reason to have a different swap interface than others. We can swap our ICP for any of the tokens listed here, chat for SNS1, for CKBTC. So this is the swapping interface. Then we have the option of adding liquidity so that we can earn rewards from trading fees. Make sure you add a comment below if you want to see a video where we go more in depth about adding liquidity and the risk on adding liquidity. Here we can see there is 17,000 liquidity for ICP and SNS1, 15,000 liquidity for ICP, CKBTC, and so on, so on. There is 80, almost 90,000 liquidity for ICP and open chat token. So there is quite some liquidity on ICP swap. After the swap interface, we have token pools where you can basically stake your tokens and earn rewards usually in the same token or in different tokens. So here we have those tokens. On farms, I think is where you stake your liquidity pool tokens after you make them. This is more advanced stuff, so we will not worry about it right now. And one cool thing, about ICP Swap is the fact that they have their own NFT marketplace and we can see many popular collections here on ICP Swap. So we have Tendi, a chicken nugget collection. We have Doodles. This is a like a fake Doodles collection, but it's it's here. Probably like a couple dozens NFT collections that are listed on ICP Swap, which is super cool for the people that want to trade this. And there is your wallet where you have all your tokens, which is pretty cool. I really like the interface. I think it looks super clean. If you want to swap your tokens, this is the place to go to. The second decentralized exchange that we'll talk about today is, of course, Sonic. You may be familiar with the Sonic DEX because we have mentioned it time and time again in our weekly reviews. Let's look at the socials. On their Twitter, they have 32,000 followers. They post very frequently on Twitter, a ton of updates. I think there is not one week without one important update from Sonic. I really like the way they communicate with the ICP community. Everybody talks about them. Everybody trusts them. They're currently decentralizing through the SNS swap right now, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's go to their website again. Very good looking website very professional. So let's uh, check out the swap. Let's see how it looks. Once again, when we connect to a decentralized exchange, we have to connect with our wallet and let's see the options available. We have all the main ICP wallets plus our internet identity. So I will choose this to log in into Sonic. So we have the swap dashboard here where we can swap our ICP for any of the tokens here, very similar to ICP swap. We can also wrap our ICP or we can swap ICP into cycles, which is a currency that powers up internet computer canisters. We have the option to add liquidity. We have the options to see our assets here on the Sonic Exchange, see our past activity, which there is none because my internet identity is new. And here we have the LBP, which I think is one of the most important things that you can do on the Sonic Decentralized Exchange. LBP stands for Liquidity Bootstrapping Pool, which is a way for teams or projects to launch their token tokens through the Sonic Decentralized Exchange and offer the tokens for the community to buy, which I think is pretty cool. Some of the previous liquidity bootstrapping pools were done by the Sonic team themselves. The registry, which we've had on our podcast, so you can check it out, Boxy Dude and Elna. It's a really great tool. It's very popular on the internet computer right now. People are using it and there is a lot of projects that are waiting in a queue to launch their token through Sonic's liquidity bootstrapping.
developing pools. Right now, Sonic is the first decentralized exchange to launch their tokens and to decentralize their applications through the SNS platform. And there is a little over three days left for people to invest in this SNS launch. They have currently raised over 400,000 ICP out of the minimum 500,000. There is almost four more days to raise this whole amount. Will they do it? Well, I think they will because the community is very, very bullish on Sonic. Cool, awesome. This is Sonic. And now let's have a look at one different decentralized exchange. I personally haven't seen anything like it anywhere else besides here on the Internet Computer Protocol. The name of the third DEX is Icy Lighthouse. The reason why this decentralized exchange is different you'll see in a second. This is how the interface looks like. Does it look familiar? Well, I think it does because it looks very similar to Binance or KuCoin or Coinbase because this decentralized exchange doesn't work similarly to the previous two where you have liquidity and you buy into that liquidity. This is what's known as an order book decentralized exchange where users can in a decentralized way and on a decentralized exchange, they can add limit orders so that they buy at a certain price or they sell at a certain price, which I think is such a cool thing to do. This is hosted on the Internet Computer Protocol. So let's go to the Dragon's chart so we can see this absolutely beautiful chart, which goes all the way from nothing and it goes like to 600 ICP, which is crazy. At 635 ICP, somebody's selling 0.8 SNS1 and people are willing to buy it down here. So this is the order book here on the right where people decide the prices they want to buy or sell their tokens at. Cool. Let's see how we connect to it. So we can connect either with the plug wallet or with our internet identity. So we have less options here, only two ways to log in. Of course, we will log in with our internet identity as we did our previous times. And let's go into Isolite House and see what else we can do here, right? We can trade any of those tokens. The order book is full of asks and bids, I think is what they're called. So you can buy CKBTC here, you can buy SNS1, open chat, you can buy any of those tokens. And I think there is really not a lot of things that we can do on this decentralized exchange besides being able to trade through this order book, which I guess is fine because that's why you go to a decentralized exchange. Great. So those are the three decentralized exchanges available on the Internet Computer Protocol. Let us know in the comment section below which one is your favorite. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.